Welcome to this Above the Cloud installment. Today I have something that really is uh, alive in me and I really wish to share it with you. The verse is spoken by Bharata, the eldest son of Rishabha Maharaj, who was really a topmost devotee. We have heard already about him, that he had been a king himself, uh, then retired to the forest for spur to practice, but unfortunately he misplaced his uh, affection, uh, became totally attached to a deer so that he gave up his spur to practice. As a result, he was first born in a deer body, but uh, uh, then uh, he took his next uh, or third birth in the body of Yada Bharata. Now, although he was this time internally fully conscious of the Supreme Lord, externally behaved like a dull person because he remembered, if I have not the right association, I might fall down again. And as a result, people mistreated him. Now once uh, the King Rahuganath uh, who was on a pilgrimage, mm, uh, was riding on a palanquin and he came by the place where Yada Bharata was sitting uh, like a dull person. Mm, then uh, at that time, one of the four carriers had an injury and couldn't continue carrying. So the king uh, took on um, uh, Yada Bharat, a self-realized soul in his service and made him a palanquin carrier. This was a mistake. And Yada Bharata was walking, he saw the ants and they were on his way, so he jumped back and forth to avoid them. But uh, this shook the palanquin like anything, so uh, Rahugana complained. And at that time, Yara Bharat gave a beautiful answer about the change of bodies. He said, uh, you are thinking that you are the king and master, and thus you are trying to order me. This is incorrect, because these positions are temporary. Today you are a king and I'm your servant. But tomorrow the position may be changed and you may be my servant and I your master. These are temporary circumstances created by providence. And Prabhupada says, in this life one may be a king and in the next life one may be a dog according to karma. And then he says, the spirit soul is in deep, deep slumber caused by the force of material nature. And a little later, without self-realization and knowledge, conditional life continues and thus one falsely claims himself a king, a servant, a cat or a dog. My dear everyone, every embodied life is temporary. Everyone alive today will die. One Greek philosopher expresses it very, very nicely. Uh, what he says is just so clear. He says, Death is like an arrow that is already in flight and your life lasts only until it reaches you. Let us think about this for a moment. There is an arrow which has our name on it. It has been loosened from the bow and it is flying and at our time 
which is precisely determined by the laws of karma, that unfailable arrow will hit and fell us to the ground. Everyone in this world, mm, uh, king or servant, highly elevated self-realized soul, or a person just starting or not even starting will be hit by the arrow which comes in its own time and not one moment earlier. Now, people are afraid when they hear about this, but a devotee is undisturbed. We spoke about Yadabharata who was mistreated because no one could understand his exalted position because externally he behaved like a retarded person. So once it so happened that uh, a band of decoids found him and they thought, wow, here is the right person which we can use for a bloody sacrifice to Mother Kali, which will give us many benefits. So they brought him to the chief of the decoids. They uh, dressed him up after they had washed him. And then the priest, he was a really a, a, a decoid, uh, raised his sword. Um, it was a fearsome sword that was meant to consecrate uh, Yara uh, Bharat uh, and decaptivate him. This was the arrow which came flying at Yara Bharat. However, he was not disturbed. Not even when he saw that he was going to be decaptivated. There are various reasons given in Shastras and uh, one is that the devotees have cut the tight knot of bodily identification and because they are the friends of all and never contemplate to judge or harm others they are very dear to the Lord. In fact, it is said they are always protected by the attentive Lord who watches over their life with a chakra. And because they have taken complete shelter at the lotus feet, they are fearless. This week, a very dear friend and beloved priest of so many devotees has left his body. I remember I had once uh, been in a car with Pankajangri Prabhu, that's his name. Uh, we were on our way to the Swiss summer camp which took place at that time in South France. And I was worried about my uh, uh, future. I asked him, do you think that a devotee who still has shortcomings will come back to Krishna? He looked at me and with so much conviction answered, of course. But what is with the shortcomings? I asked. Then he answered, he said, when the children see their father in the distance and they, 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 they run towards him, uh, they have many shortcomings. They may meanly push each other into the side with their elbows. They may not be able to speak coherently. And one child may even pass in the diapers. But the father, seeing that they are trying to go towards him, will receive them 
equally and lovingly. He will even embrace the child who has made himself or herself dirty. In the same way, Krishna uh, will receive every one of us who is trying his best to walk in his direction despite their shortcomings because the Lord is merciful. This conviction of uh, the supreme attribute of Krishna in relationship to the conditioned souls in this world, this is his uh, vatsalatva, the quality of caring like a parent or being merciful. This conviction in this protection is only possible if one lives a life dedicated to the service of the Lord. Then one will say, of course, no problem. Uh, I would like to speak of another memory of Pankajangri, where he reveals his great, great uh, confidence in the mercy by which everything becomes possible. Uh, someone who went with him on Brajmanda Parikrama uh, saw him giving toffees from his hand to people. He would, all, uh, to the children mostly, uh, he would always ask uh, uh, the little boys and girls who came to him, chant Hare Krishna, and then he gave them one toffee. Now, once there was a girl who came running to him and she pulled his chada and said, Baba, give me a toffee. He said the same, say Hare Krishna and I will give you. But she, she said, Jai Sri Radhe. So he went to put his hand in the bag and wanted to take out one toffee, but somehow many came out of the bag and spilled on the ground. The girl uh, quickly picked them up and with a beaming smile she replied happily, See, this is Vrindavan. If you say Krishna, you don't get a lot. But if you say Radhe, you get more than what you deserve. Pankajangri was struck. He begged the child to put in a petition to Srimati Radhika on his behalf. In fact, he even kneeled down before the child and said, please, 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 uh, you are from here, you are a Prichbasi, uh, please uh, uh, beg Srimati Radharani. This idea of running your life dependent on mercy makes you confident and undisturbed. Let us end by visiting Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, the great Acharya, who on his deathbed gave some final instructions. It is these instructions which I would like you to keep in mind and try to practice along the, uh, their lines. He dictated um, because he was lying. Um, um, he said first, remember that this world is temporary and lasts only a day or two. Give up your attachments and transcend this world of illusion. You might say, yeah, but how do you give up these deep ingrained attachments? He had an answer. Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur dictated, if you wish to triumph over attraction and repulsion, then you should remember this. By becoming attracted to the transcendental holy name, you will be delivered from these attachments. 
wow, that's deep. And then he said, uh, he said uh, 17 instructions, but I've taken only three. Why would you accept the poverty of a life without hearing and chanting about Krishna, your only wealth? This is the point. When you wish to increase your attachments to the real world, if you wish to become free from illusions that strongly pull you into the unreal, increase your chanting. Because as you associate with Krishna in the form of his name, you will develop more and more attachments, just like to him. Just like when you are together with a person and you get to know them more and more, all their qualities, their attractive qualities, then the attachment is born. Thank you very much for listening and uh, see you for uh, the next above the clouds or sometimes in the future.